Hey guys, how's it going? This is Natinata, and welcome back to Corpse Party Book of Shadows. I'm here, carrying on from last episode, playing as Sayako, and we are in the bomb shelter. So, without further ado, let's um, see what we've got here. Let's try going to the boys' room, because, because we're a girl, and that's totally cool. Like, going into the other gender's room. Oh, wait. What? Kagami, Kagami. Bird in the basket. When, oh, when will you come out? Will it be in the evening of dawn? The crane and the turtle have fallen. So who is it that stands behind me? What is... What am I... Am I hearing things? That's a child's voice, isn't it? Maybe this really is an elementary school after all. Um... Oh god, it's not those freaking kids, is it? Hmm... What are we gonna do? Screw it. We're carrying on to the boys' room. Yeah! The lights flickered, and I could swear I just saw something up on the path ahead. Probably just my eyes playing tricks on me, right? Um, is somebody there? <sighs> uh. Ah! sealed firmly shut. There's no way to open it. Oh well. Let's go to the girls' room. The one where I should be going anyway. Is this a bathroom? I'm in like a cave and there's a bathroom here? No matter how I looked at it, nothing about this place seemed like an elementary school in any way. But there were lights on the ceiling and support beams to prevent cave-ins so it certainly wasn't a naturally formed cavern either. I mean, there was even indoor plumbing down here. Oh, fuck. <sighs> no thank you. I actually did have to go, but there's a limit to how dirty and disgusting a bathroom stall can get before I just refuse to close myself in there. Guess I just have to hold it. Oh man, look at him. Look at him. There are skeletal remains here. It's a small child. Maybe she was hiding? There's a name tag attached to her jacket. Renaissance Elementary School, Mina Nishio. What the hell? Fucking Sayaka doesn't give a fuck. She's just like, oh, skeletal remains. That's pretty cool. Prob's hiding, though. Oh, fuck. Why? Why? Save me. Help me, please. It hurts. Please stop. I don't particularly like this corner here. Oh, oh, okay. That was fucking terrifying. We're getting the fuck out of here. Run, 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 run. Leaving, leaving, leaving. We're getting the fucking out of here. No more little girls. Holy shit. That little scream, though, fucking put... Fucking goose pimples on me, holy shit. Alright, I shouldn't have expected much more from a dead end like this. Oh. Yeah, let's just go into the death room, why don't we? You know, this layout looks kind of, um... Yeah, this layout's really familiar. This is the layout of the underground of... Yeah, well, of course, it's obvious it's that, but I mean... I, I recall this from the last corpse party. Alright, the door is thoroughly sealed, there's no way to get inside. To be quite honest with you, I am rather glad because of that, because I really don't want to go in there. I thought that this was the toilet last time. No, no, that was the toilet. Should I go down this way? Ah, screw it, let's go down this way. May as well investigate everything, right? 
No. No. No, shut up. I, I could hear children calling for me, hiding and goading me to find them. <sighs> Fuck me. <laughs> Should we really go? Alright, let's go. Let's do it. Come on. Sayaka, put on your big girl pants. We're going to find some kids. I could hear the voices of children playing. <laughs> Just gonna get the hell out of here. Let's go along this way. Yep. Never mind the the ghostly children. saiga has got fucking balls of steel. No more. Alright, I think she's breaking now. Holy shit. So, you may proceed, you may proceed. What narrow path is this? It is the path of the heavenly host. God, what is this place? Where even am I? Don't lose your head. We're gonna make it. I could hear children laughing. Among the voices, I heard the sound of a door opening somewhere nearby. Oh, fuck. Jesus Christ. That laughing is so innocent, but so evil. Oh, don't put fucking... God damn it, that's terrible. There's a foul-smelling rotting corpse here. Based on uniform, it was probably a male high school student in life. He seems to have died sitting down, though he doesn't look very relaxed. There's a student ID name tag on his chest. Karasuyama High School. Yoki Kaimimizu. Kamimizu. See, she doesn't even give a shit. She's just like, screw it, I'm gonna just go right up to his chest and inspect his damn freaking name tag. She hasn't even yet said anything about the dead... This. There's a fully decomposed corpse here. Are you serious? It doesn't look decomposed to me. She's wearing a skirt, so it seems safe to assume this was a female student in life. Her name tag confirms this. Shobu University Middle School, Hinako Meguri. Okay. Well, Hinako, rest in pieces. I'm out of here. Door sealed shut. Brilliant. Looks like, um, my only option. Oh wait, they s She said that she heard a door open nearby. Maybe this is the one that opened. Let's check it. Oh, it opened. I didn't think this place would get any darker, but this room proved me wrong. It was completely and utterly devoid of all light. My only indication as to its size was the bloop, bloop sound of dripping water from somewhere inside. And based on the echo, it didn't seem too big. I was perfectly content to leave it at that. Honestly. But I couldn't. Because I knew Naho might have been in there, seized with fear and panic. She usually kept a cool head, sure, but I'd just seen what she looked like when she didn't, and it worried the hell out of me, so I had to know. Naho? No response. Not that I heard, anyway. That dripping wasn't very loud, but it echoed enough that it could be conceivably... God damn it. That it could conceivably obscure the sound of a person's voice. As long as I kept the door to this room open, though, the pale light of the corridor would filter in, and I'd be able to see the exit. It may not have illuminated much, but at least I'd be able to find my way out in a pinch. So I swallowed my fear and walked into the darkness. Ugh, gross. Hmm? What's that smell? 
It stinks to high heaven. Is something rotting in here? Ah! Uh, what spilled? It's all over my leg. Without thinking, I smacked my hand against my leg, as if trying to knock off whatever was stuck to it. Th uh, what is this? The metallic smell was so thick that I almost couldn't breathe. Was it blood? Did I just wipe blood on my hand? No, it couldn't be. I got a sudden itch on my thigh, so I impulsively reached down and scratched it. And in doing so, a small, rice-sized bead stuck to the ball of my finger. But in this all-consuming darkness, I had no idea to tell what it was. It felt an awful lot like a grain of rice, though, even smushing and smearing like one when I needed it between my thumb and forefinger. What is this thing? Skin? From my thigh? Crap, I hope not. Ah! The lights! <gasps> oh, God! What is this place? The source of the horrible smell was suddenly clear. The room was absolutely drenched, from wall to wall and ceiling to floor, with blood and human viscera. How many gallons of blood must there have been to coat this entire room? And the worst part was, none of it was dry. It was all wet. It was all fresh. There were indistinguishable chunks of flesh and bone everywhere. Just what kinds of twisted things was this room being used for? Ah! Uh, huh? I scratched my itching thigh again with my finger, then looked down at my legs, and all at once my blood ran cold. What? Ah! Uh, ah! A swarm of little white bugs was wriggling around on both my legs. That's what I'd squished between my fingers, but there were many, many more. They were also on my shirt, my skirt, my socks, even inside my shoes. Uh, ah! I fell into a state of total panic. I threw off my shoes and began frantically brushing myself off with my arms. I grabbed the hem of my skirt and the collars of my socks and shook the hell out of them too trying to knock as many bugs off my body as I possibly could. <laughs> Stumbling around, I accidentally planted the heel of my sock into a murky puddle of red liquid. My mind went blank with disgust. Gross, 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 gross! I can't take this anymore! <laughs> Calm down, Sayaka. This was just a slaughterhouse. This was just a place where livestock was chopped up into meat. It was perfectly natural. There was nothing unusual about this room at all. The blood, the chunks of flesh and bone, probably just from animals. Ah, oh, but that's where you're wrong. Okay. It's absolutely soaked with blood. There's no doubt that countless living things have been killed here. Well, that's good. Good to know. What's this? It's an enormous standing closet with double doors. Someone my size could most likely fit inside in a pinch. Well, I'm having a feeling we're not going to go in there. Filthy buckets littered the room. Each one was stuffed with reddish-black globs of meat in quivering yellow and white liquid. In most of them, femur-like bones adorned the surface. But one of them seemed to be a far more horrid stew than the others. And that's because one of them was full of arms. Human arms. Several of them jutting out above the bucket lip and practically waving at passers-by. Uh, 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 uh. Screams are strange beasts.
because they basically override all sense of logic and reason within a person's mind. Quite naturally, quite automatically in my shock, a scream forced its way out from inside my body, from the very pit of my stomach. <sighs> my senses had become razor sharp. I could faintly hear footsteps approaching from the hall outside the room. My stomach tightened, the next scream in, stopping the next scream in my throat. I was sure of it. In the corridor just outside this room, someone or something was coming this way. And judging by sound, it sure wasn't Naho. <laughs> Another scream threatened to slip out. I quickly stifled it. The last thing I needed was to give away my position. Whoever this was was getting closer and closer. I had to act. The whole way outside was just a straight shot, so no escaping the room without being seen wasn't an option. Hiding was my only hope. But hiding where? Well, well, well. Time to save, just in case. Throw down purgatory? Hell yeah. Alright, so if I recall correctly from the last corpse party, when Taguchi ran into the blood-soaked te- uh, the cabinet, he got raped, pretty much. And was it Mochida and Naomi hid under the blood-soaked table and got away with it? So let's do that one. Would I really be okay under the table? Not the best choice, but I guess there really weren't too many other options. Either way, I couldn't afford to hesitate at a time like this. I had to follow my instincts. <laughs> Fortunately, the table was pretty low to the ground, so I did have some cover here. Nonetheless, I prayed that the footsteps to pa would pass by without coming in. But then, the person making those footsteps was probably the same person who turned on the light in here, so I didn't honestly hold out much hope. Rapidly, my thoughts grew darker. Worst case scenarios began flashing through my mind, one after another. I grasped my quivering mouth and violently shaking shoulders in an attempt to calm myself down. I clenched my eyes shut and willed myself to swallow any sounds that threatened to leak out. No, no, please help me. What was happening? Uh -huh. <coughs> that was the sound of a girl in pain. The man had apparently dropped someone onto the table, and she was either injured or being injured. <coughs> it hurts, it hurts, it hurts, it hurts, it hurts, it hurts! I could hear an unearthly scream from the other side of the table above me. My body became rigid. <laughs> Crap. If he bent down to pick that up, he'd see me for sure. He was a very strange, horrifying creature. He seemed not quite human, but not really anything else either, and whatever he was, I was scared to death of him. Uh, uh, uh. On second thought, maybe he was human. He just had a grotesque face and an abnormally large body, not to mention a zombie-like disposition. He was horrifying. Uh, uh. I feared as much for my life as any human being can. I was frightened, afraid, terrified. There's no word strong enough. Ah, 
Let me go! Let me go! I was flailing my arms and legs and doing everything I possibly could to break free from his grip. But this man was strong as an ox. He wasn't letting go. I was fairly certain he could crush my throat with his bare hands if he wanted to. <sighs> Somebody! Anybody! No! Mummy! <laughs> the man drew me up by my neck and violently threw me toward the center of the room. It was almost as if he were approving my hypothesis. The tissue and bones in my throat scraped together with a sickening unnatural sound. I gasped for air. My trachea was in pieces. I could feel my consciousness drifting away. I wasn't sure why, but he then suddenly let out a blood-curdling moan and made a beeline toward the room's only exit. As he ran out, he turned around and slammed his hand into the heavy iron door, and it began slowly lurching closed. Why? I was locked in. I knew it right away. I ran toward the door as best as I could manage, but I already knew I wouldn't be able to get it open again. Wait, please, help me! The girl I'd heard screaming was strapped onto the surface of the now overturned table, dangling helplessly. Please, help! Ah! God, no! Open! Open, goddammit! <sighs> it hurts. It hurts. <laughs> Days passed. I couldn't even begin to guess how many. Ooh, days passed, really. Well, well, well. It seems that I am all out of time, guys. Sorry about that. I'm going to have to leave it right here. I wonder what's going to happen next time. Maybe she'll be found, escape, get killed, who knows. But all I know is that for now, I'd like to thank you all for watching. Um, I really hope that you guys are enjoying the series. I, myself, am enjoying it to pieces. So, you know, if you don't like it, then I'll be unhappy, but I'll still play it anyway. So, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so, um, I'll see you guys in the next piece of shit that I upload. Stay tuned for more. Oh, I like that outro. I'm gonna use that for now. Done.